Hi and welcome back to another video. Yesterday was the release of the RTX 4070. That's why I'm pretty sure you already saw one or the other video about the Founders Edition. And since today, we are also allowed to talk and show about custom cards with overclocking. For example, the Gainward Phoenix card and also the Inno 3D iGel. These are the three models which we are going to compare in today's video. Compared to the Founders Edition, the Inno 3D iGel is quite a bit bigger. But I also think, I mean, in terms of 4070, the Founders Edition is just quite a bit smaller, I think. It's also only using two fans and I mean, a lot of people already showed this yesterday, so I'm not going to talk about this in like more detail. The Inno 3D iGel is using three fans instead of two on the Founders Edition. They are also bigger in diameter. This is 95 and I think this is 90. And I mean, one thing I want to highlight, which I did not really like on this card, is that this connector is so deeply recessed, you can see, that it's fine to plug it in. But once you want to remove the cable, I can't really like access this because just look at how much clearance there is for my finger to get in. And then you have to keep in mind there's the cable also in the way. Like that's not convenient. I had to use a screwdriver to make, like to unrelease this part right here. That was not that nice. The card comes with a quite thick aluminum backplate on the backside. It has a cutout behind the GPU. I'm not quite sure why they did it. Because if you look like through here, you can see there are some quite thick thermal pads on there as well. I guess there must have been enough clearance to like close this or like at least maybe have a small cutout on the aluminum on the back. To fully close it would have looked a bit nicer and also like the sticker placement. Like I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe just stick it here or somewhere else because I mean in most of the systems the card is still horizontally, not vertically. And then you have like you have a nicely designed card and then you have the sticker right in your face. It just doesn't look nice. The Game Word Phoenix has a similar shape, like outer dimensions. It also comes with three fans. These are 90 millimeter instead of 95, so like a tiny bit smaller. This is going to be RGB illuminated, which we will later see quickly. This is done better, like the cutout for accessing the power connector is better than on the iChill. I also like the backplate design better. It's fully closed and also the sticker is in a better position. Straight starting with the clock speed of the three cards. Comparing in 1440p gaming, we can see about 2715 MHz on the NVIDIA Founders Edition, which is shown in the green line. Then we have the Inno 3D with the blue line showing about 2770 MHz. And with the yellow line, we see the Gainward Phoenix showing about 2830 megahertz. This means that we are talking about 3 to 4 percent clock speed increase of these overclocking models versus the Founders Edition and you can probably already guess what this means for gaming performance. And if we look into 3D Mark times by Extreme GT1 we can see an increase from 54 to 55 FPS. And I also did some gaming benchmarks where I could also see 1 to 3% performance increase. And honestly, 1 to 3%, that's almost measurement tolerance, which also means that you can basically say that these overclocking models perform identical to the Founders Edition, so I will not perform any other tests. This leads me to a short NDA or release rant, simply because, again, this doesn't make any kind of sense. So yesterday we had the RTX 4070 Founders Edition or MSRP card launch. So any kind of stock performance you can show. And today I can show benchmarks for a card with 40 megahertz more performance. Like 1% more, which is measurement tolerance. I'm not sure what's going on in NVIDIA's head, but I mean, do you expect that some reviewer is reviewing a card and then on the next day, he's going to like show exactly the same benchmarks again because 1% is exactly the same with a different card. Like, it's just completely unnecessary again. Still, there are definitely differences between these cards. And first of all, we look at the iChill and Phoenix when it comes to the power consumption. And even though they have a slightly higher clock, they still have about the same power draw with about 200 watt under gaming load. In Windows Idle, the difference is quite significant. The Founders Edition has about 4 watt and the other ones are about 3 times higher. And the only explanation I have for this is that they use one fan more, 
which is definitely causing a higher power consumption and also they use RGB, whereas you cannot find RGB on the Founders Edition. Regarding temperatures, both iChill and Phoenix perform better than the Founders Edition. Even though all three cards show the identical difference between hotspot and GPU temperature of about 10 Kelvin, the custom models will perform definitely better. We see about 60 degrees Celsius GPU temperature and that's about 10 degrees Celsius less than on the Founders Edition. Especially the noise level is quite interesting because the Founders Edition is already pretty quiet. But then if you look at iChill and Phoenix, both are measured with about 36 dBA and that's with 40 centimeter distance. So all of them are extremely quiet and especially iChill and Phoenix, you cannot really hear them. And I guess in a well ventilated case, you will definitely not be able to hear these cards. And talking about not hearing these cards, I'm also happy that all three of them have almost no coil whine. I tested this at 1440p with about 150 FPS, which I consider an average gaming scenario. And you can hear a slight coil whine, but it's pretty quiet. And I'm pretty sure if it's a closed case, you will not be able to notice this. One more thing I want to add to this review, even though it's not specific about these models, but for the 4070. So if you look at most of the videos from yesterday, you can see that it performs very similar to a 3080. And now you might be in the situation that you have roughly this budget and you're thinking about, are you maybe getting a 3080 or a 4070? And that's something I want to add because if you have the same budget and even if you might get a 3080 for maybe 50 euro less, you should still go for this card because especially in Germany, the energy prices are quite insane. We pay about 35 cent per kilowatt hour. That means like quickly calculated because this card consumes about 120 watt less than a 3080, you will save about 50 to 70 euro per year on like a basis if you game for about four hours per day. That's something you have to keep in mind. I think it's quite substantial that this card consumes significantly lower power than a 3080. So if I was in the decision to buy either a 3080 or 4070, even if it's like 50 to 100 euro price difference, I would still go for the 4070 if you want to keep it for at least two years. Now we want to check out the cards in more detail and tear them down. The backplate of the iShield looks extremely rigid and turning it around, we can also find thermal pads on there, which are responsible for spreading the heat not only to the backplate and for dissipation, but also to spread it on the PCB itself. And first look, honestly, I was not sure if these thermal pads are sticked to the foil, like this insulation foil to prevent any kind of short circuit to the card. But then after removing it, I could see there are cutouts in the foil. Already during disassembly of the iChill I noticed how close this design must be to a founder's edition. But at least at the time shooting this video I didn't have a picture of a 4070 founder's edition so I also decided to disassemble this quickly. And already first look you can see how close both PCBs have to be design wise because on the founder's edition you can see some of these holes for through mount and these are not populated. But on the iChill, these are populated exactly same amount, same kind of distance. And I guess on the Founders Edition, they must just be using SMD inductors on the front. Apart from that, both PCBs are extremely similar. Looking at the Founders Edition, for example, we have this tiny piece of metal in the back, which is for electrical connection of the PCB to the back plate to ground it. And on the iChill, this solder pad also exists, but it's just not populated. And that's how the Founders Edition looks otherwise. It's an extremely tiny PCB and also you can see that four faces are not used. Now if we put both of the PCBs directly next to each other, you can see how similar they are. They're just tiny differences in population of some of the components. For example, the Founders Edition is using a different fan connection. That's why you're missing these like plastic pieces or connectors on the bottom right. And also on the Founders Edition, the four faces which are not used are used on the eye chill. So the eye chill is fully populated. As assumed earlier, the cooler of this iChill 4070 is fully identical to an 4080, which I'm a big fan of. I mean, the 4070 is using less power draw and that's why we can see this very good temperature result and also why this 4070 is so extremely quiet. On the first look, the Gainward Phoenix is using a different PCB. 
Looking at the area on the left, we can find a quite interesting modification, which would theoretically allow to use two of the older traditional PCIe 8-pin connectors instead of the 12-volt high-power connector. If we look at the cooler of the Gameboard Phoenix, we can see that it's about 5 mm smaller than the iChill, but generally speaking, they're pretty much the same size, also same kind of surface area, only the fan is a little bit smaller, and that's totally in line with the kind of temperature and also noise level that we measured. Looking at a PCB of the Game Board card, we can see that the base must be the same as of the Founders Edition. I mean, apart from the area on the right with the 8-pin PCIe connectors, like the traditional ones, the base is surely the same. And also similar to Nvidia, Game Board did not populate all of the empty spots, three of the phases are empty. So basically on these three models, you are just buying a different cooler and like a more or less populated PCB. That's why just objectively speaking, the Inno 3D would be the best purchase because it's the fully populated PCB and it has the biggest cooler. Just slightly more surface area than on the gain board, but also slightly bigger fans, which then results in lower fan speed. We see about 1000 RPM on the you know, 3D card under load, which is like impressively low and you cannot really hear it. And that's why I guess overall, the Game Board and the Inno 3D are both very good options and the Founders Edition if you have less space like an, on a tiny case for example. And I mean it's difficult to say if any of these would be recommended because that depends on the price, depends on your region and that's something you just have to check locally and then with the information you have decide whether there is a card you want to purchase or maybe not purchase. So much about these 4070 cards, thanks for tuning in, till next time, bye bye.